evening all for the 10th day of uh, uh, webinar lecture series on advanced water and wastewater treatment today we have uh, professor carlos from brazil carlos martinez hutil from brazil he is the well known professor or researcher in the field of electrochemical treatment of water and wastewater so apart from carlos we have experts uh, dr arun kumar talla from nit suratkal Dr. Uh, Tuhin Banerji from CSR Niri Mumbai Zonal Lab, Dr. Seema Singh from Haridwar, and Dr. Vijay Priya from Virginia Tech USA. So, last a few uh, days we discuss about the generation of radicals or the treatment of water and wastewater by different methods, including acoustic cavitation or hydrodynamic cavitation or electrochemical methods. So today, Carlos will explain about. the various electrochemical treatment methods that we will use for the treatment of water and wastewater electrochemical tra treatment methods are economically is good for treatment of wastewater it may be very cost is very less and the efficiency is very high so he will explain the different methods that we can adopt for the treatment of wa water and wastewater before starting the program i just introduce professor carlos professor carlos is graduated in chemistry at university de las Americas Pebble Mexico under supervision of professor Dr Marco Antonio Quiroz Alfaro after the work experience in SIPA specialty specialty chemicals currently acquired by the German chemi chemical company BASF he moved to Ferrara Italy where he received his phd in chemical sciences at the university of ferrara under supervision of professor Achille di Battisti During the same period, he worked as visiting scientist in the group of Professor Christoph Kamenelis at the EPFL Institute, Switzerland. Professor C. Kamenelis is the well-known person in the uh, anodic oxidation. You can see a lot of papers by uh, well-known papers by this professor. From since 2005 to 2008, he was he has served as faculty member in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Milan. In 2008, he also moved to Brazil, where he is currently is an associate professor in the Institute of Chemistry at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte. He was awarded with the Oronzio and Nicolo de Nora Foundation Prize by the Italian Chemical Society in 2005, and the Oronzio and Nicolo de Nora Foundation Prize on Environmental Electrochemistry by the International Society of Electrochemistry in 2009. The Mexican scientist was also recognized by German government in 2009 with the Green Talent Award for his contribution in the field of water disinfection treatment by new electrochemical technologies. He has published more than 220 publications in international journals with more than 9000 citations and with H index 42, 12 chapters of books and co-editor of the books entitled Synthetic Diamond Films. Uh, fillings by uh, published by Wiley and Sons, electrochemical water and wastewater treatment by Elsevier, as well as contributions to national and international conferences. Also, he participated participated in the editorial boards of RC Advances, Royal Society of Chemistry, Air, Soil and Water Research, Sei Publications, Journal of Chemistry, Hindavi Publications, Applied Catalysis B and Environmental Elsevier Publications, and Scientific Reports, Nature Groups. his research interest includes electrochemical advanced oxidation process water for water and wastewater water treatment electrocatalytic materials electrocatalysis photocatalysis electro organic synthesis and electro analysis currently he is a visiting scientist in the institute of organic chemistry at jonas gutenberg university mainz that is in germany supported by alexander von humboldt foundation He is the member of Spanish Network Excellence E3 Tech and president of Brazilian Society of Electrochemistry and Electroanalysis. Professor Carlos, please. Thank you so much for the kindly presentation, and thank you so much for the invitation for to participate in this uh, webinar about different topics on the advanced oxidation process, and in this case, about the electrochemical technologies. Now I would try to once again to share the presentation. Uh, 
it's okay. Okay, then uh, the topic uh, about this uh, presentation is the electrochemical technologies for wet water treatment, fundamentals, current advances, and new trends. It's true that uh, specific or technologies or specific process uh, continues every year to advance or to produce different technologies, devices, methods, uh, approach, or mechanisms. And for the reason is maybe almost impossible to discuss everything about the electrochemical technologies. But we will try to focus in different or in the most important technologies about the, the, the use of different oxidizing species and, and to use this kind of technologies to, to treat water and combine it with other technologies to improve the, the efficiency of this kind uh, approaches. Then, thank you so much once again for the invitation for Professor Nidic and thank you so much for the participation for the participation participation for the all professors, all uh, people and students and every everybody. Then uh, the university where I work, I am working now, is in the Universidad, Universidad Federal do Rio Grande do Norte, is in Brazil. Yeah. The topic is uh, the electrochemical technologies for water, wet water treatment. And where is specifically the, the place where I live and I am working now? Uh, we check in at this moment the map of the uh, Brazilian regions in the map. And in that red point is the Natal and Rio Grande do Norte, that is the base on the big or most important region at the Northwest in Brazil. Uh, the top side, right of side, is the campus of the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte, and the, we can check some of photographs about the place or the city, in this case, Natal. Uh, Natal is a, a city very close to the sea, yeah, and we tried, to, we have to the opportunity to uh, obtain different attractions in this kind of place. And at the, same, at the same time, it's a good point to um, try to enter in collaboration or to link with other countries in Europe and in South American uh, countries. Then this is the campus and this is the building where uh, the laboratory of the environmental uh, electrochemistry and applied electrochemistry uh, works. The research lines in the laboratory uh, are about the wet water treatment, soil remediation, electroanalysis, corrosion, and electrocatalytic materials. And during the presentation, we try to explain or to put in evidence different um, works or different results obtained from my group. And uh, we will try to um, introduce different electrochemical technologies. Then I divided the presentation in different uh, specific topics. And the first line is the fundamentals. Uh, the fundamentals is divided into timeline because different researchers contribute with different papers, reports, uh, data, results, and main information about different electrochemical technologies. At the same time, we will try to check specific concepts about the electrochemical oxidation. After that, we talk about the process, was, what is the uh, form uh, we can apply this kind of process, the electrochemical oxidation, and uh, consequently uh, to talk about the different applications of this kind of technology. But it's important to, 
indicate that the electrochemical oxidation is the not is the only electrochemical technology, but for the electrochemical advanced oxidation process is probably the, the starting material or the initial technology that uh, contribute to, uh, to emerging other technologies. For the reason I, I think it's more important to uh, remember or to explain once again what is the fundamentals or the concepts about the electrochemical oxidation. Then, in 94, this is, was published, this uh, review, the electrochemistry and the environment by Russia War, Banyas and Greg Swain in the Jordan of Applied Electrochemistry. In that review, the authors explain the new uh, concepts or approach about the use of the electrochemistry to treat, to monitoring, to sensing, to degrading, to remove to um, different branches of the electrochemistry to the environmental protection. In that review, uh, the most important uh, aspects about the technologies uh, is the mention about the advantage in the case of the electrochemistry, uh, is its environmental compatibility, versatility, high energy, energy efficiency, and my liability automation, safety. And the two ways most important in this kind of technologies is the treatment of the elements and the waste. And at the same time, integrate these kind of technologies with all their approaches or with the same technologies to remove different organic or inorganic pollutants from water, from air, or from soil. For this kind of advantage, the electrochemistry or electrochemical technologies offer promising approach for the prevention of the pollution problems. And in the last or over the past 40 years, electrochemical technology has been largest developed for or as alternative for the use in the wet water remediation. But at the beginning, the most important technologies are the electrochemical coagulation, electrochemical reduction, electrochemical flotation, electrochemical oxidation. Maybe we started the photo-assisted electrochemical methods, and at the same time emerging on a specific uh, technology about the use, the Fenton approach together with electrochemistry. But it's really important to explain these old, old technologies. Probably, yes, it's affirmative. Of course, all electrochemical technologies are very important. But at this time, I would I would like to, 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 to explain or to introduce the topic, uh, talking about the electrochemical oxidation. All technologies working mainly by using the electron. When we apply a specific potential or current, we induce a specific uh, electric files and at the same time uh, promote the transfer the transfer between the electrode and the solution or between the electrode and the species in the solution, electrons. But all technologies are clean technologies, probably not completely, because sometimes depending on the case, different electrochemical technologies uh, don't achieve a complete removal of the pollutants. And probably it's very difficult to obtain a specific electrochemical technology to achieve a complete elimination of the organic or inorganic pollutants. For this reason, uh, at this time, or for many groups in the world, it's more important to couple the electrochemical technologies with other processes or maybe sometimes other processes are 
better than the electrochemical technologies. Other uh, concern about the electrochemical technologies is important to know uh, or to take in consider into consideration that sometimes the electrochemical technologies are not clean because produce all their more toxic pollutants than the beginning or the start of the pollutants. Why? is due to the approaches, due to the mechanisms, due to the species in the solution or in the efferents, or the recombination between the organic and inorganic, organic and organic pollutants in the wastewater. water. For their reason, not uh, always, or not all electrochemical technologies are clean or completely clear. Then, in the case of the electrochemical oxidation, at the same time or together with other electrochemical technologies, we have a specific timeline. In this case, the electrochemical oxidation started at the 70s. And the pioneering studies uh, were report, was reported by uh, Nielsen, Milich, and Rawls. After that, arrive or give contribution by Sucre, Hitler, and Watkinson. And in the, in the middle and in the beginning, in the 90, Kerr, Stokia, and Kass give an important contribution about the electrocatalytic materials. After that, we know the, 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 the timeline or the uh, specific contributions of, of by P.C. Johnson and by Cominellis because this is Johnson and Cominellis uh, told about the specific mechanisms and contribute more uh, or with the great contribution about both authors is the mechanisms and the classification of the anons. And at the same time, the, this, uh, uh, the difference between the electrocatalytic materials in the, in the in the use during with different electrochemical technologies. After that, different uh, researchers contribute with different uh, reports, results in the about the electrochemical oxidation or combining or um, discovering different or other electrochemical technologies. What is the concept about the electrochemical oxidation? We uh, explain that Kirk and Kost contribute with the specific uh, reports about electrocatalytic materials. In the 19th, the first publication was about the use of tin oxide like electrode to remove specific organic materials in solution. After that was used the lead oxide and platinum. Both contributions um, explain about the overpotential electrons. What is the kind of uh, behavior? A specific or different electrocatalytic materials uh, present overpotential to produce uh, reactive oxygen species. And the first contribution in, in the file of the electrochemical treatment of the organic pollutants was about the use of the tin oxide, lead oxide, and platinum. Stuckian cause observed that uh, that materials remove, in this case, phenol or other organic materials. But at the same time, each one of, of them have, uh, has a different behavior. And in that moment, I started um, the studies about the contribution of the model of the mechanisms occurring during the elimination of the organics. Because it's important to, or at that time, the researchers Ask, ask it about the, what is the, the, the most important aspect 
to observe different behaviors related to different electrocatalytic materials. Why the efficiency or the removal percentage is different for each one of these kind of materials. During the same years, DC Johnson contributes with the specific publications about the anodic oxidation oxygen transfer reactions. In that publications, DC Johnson explained that there is or there are a specific um, oxygen species in solution or in the effluent that are produced during the uh, contact with the uh, anode surface. And after that, this kind of oxygen species transfer oxygen or transfer electrons to the organic pollutants. This kind of the process contribute to the oxidation of the organics. But at that place, it's uh, probably it's the beginning of the electrochemical oxidation and the uh, interaction between each one of the electrocatalytic materials is not clear. For the reason, this is Johnson uh, explained that exists a specific active site in the electrode surface that promotes the electrolysis of the water or discharge of the water promoting the production of the specific reactive oxygen species. That oxygen species react with the organic pollutants, and after that, the organic pollutants is, are oxidizing in the solution. The oxygen reactive species can establish an equilibrium with the surface, and after that, promote the production of the oxygen. But it's very general, this mechanism. For this reason, and in the, in the same decade, the professor Christo, Christos Cominelis pushed or put together every piece of this puzzle and contribute with this, kind, with this publication about the electrocatalysis in the electrochemical conversion and combustion of the organic pollutants and contribute with the famous scheme of famous mechanisms about the elimination of the organics with different pathways. The first pathway is the electrochemical combustion and the second pathway is the electrochemical conversion. In the first step or in the first uh, stage, the water is electrolyzed, producing hydroxyl radicals. The hydroxyl radicals interact or uh, has a specific interaction with the surface of the electrode producing or uh, high oxidize or maintaining free radicals in the surface of this kind of the electrocatalytic material. If the uh, hydroxyl radicals are remaining free or uh, ready to attack the organic compounds, the electrochemical combustion is promoted. When the organic uh, is uh, oxidized, the carbon dioxide and water are produced and the organic pollutant is removed completely. And in the second play, in the second pathway, the organic compound is converted. For the reason received the name of the conversion because the organic interact with the higher oxidized because the surface interact strongly with the hydroxyl radical and after that um, convert the organic pollutant in subproducts or intermediates of the oxidation process. In both pathways, the oxygen evolution is the uh, problem or the competition reaction during the elimination of the organic pollutant. This kind of the mechanisms was possible because Cominellis introduced the concept of the free hydroxyl radicals at the surface and check with different materials the uh, availability of this kind of the hydroxyl radicals 
in the anodic surface and uh, producing an adduct by using a specific organic trapping, it's possible to identify what is the uh, material producing more amount of this kind of reactive oxygen species. And these species are available to attack or to promote specific reactions during the treatment. Uh, in the study of the commingalis, platinum and iridium reproducing a lower amount of the hydroxy radicals, while uh, thin oxide produce higher uh, concentration of the hydroxy radicals, forming an adduct and decreasing the absorbance of the uh, starting material that absorbing in a specific uh, wavelength. And this is the kind of form to prove uh, to prove the existence of the hydroxy radicals at that time. After that, with this information, was possible to classify the anotic materials in two uh, specific um, types, active anodes and non-active anodes. In the first, uh, in the first uh, class, the oxygen evolution reaction yeah, is promoted in higher concentration and and it's very, very uh, important reaction at this kind of materials. And consequently, uh, these kind of materials are poor uh, electrocatalysts for the elimination of the organics because the hydroxy radicals are not remaining free in the surface and interact strongly with the surface of this kind of material. In the second classification or in the second class, the oxygen evolution reaction is not promoted in the same uh, uh, the same rate and for the reason because the potential is uh, the oxygen evolution reaction is occurs at a higher potential and for the rush for the reason these kind of materials are good, good electrocatalysts for the uh, oxidation process or for to remove the organic pollutants from the water. But during that years or these years, the most important material introduced was the diamond electrode. And this kind of material has a specific or peculiar characteristic because the when we you introduce this kind of material in a specific electrochemical cell and apply um, current density or a specific potential, we promote uh, the electrolysis of the water, producing hydroxy radicals. This kind of the radicals has half a uh, weightly interaction with the diamond surface, producing a specific film of the oxygen reactive uh, species. And when the organic pollutant is close to the uh, surface, the hydroxyl radicals react, promoting the electrochemical combustion of this kind of the organic pollutants. At the same time, it's on, uh, sometimes the hydroxyl radicals goes or uh, interact in the bulk, but remember the hydroxyl radical has a very short life, and for the reason probably this kind of the pathway is not much must come. The most important reaction is when the organic pollutant is very close to the surface and a good amount or great amount of the drugs or radicals is produced by the diamond surface. Then the electrochemical treatment by using electrochemical oxidation is performed uh, in this way. We have a specific electrochemical uh, cell were introduced cathode and anodic material. And in the anodic material, we promote two reactions, direct oxidation or indirect oxidation. But at the same time, we have the production of the oxygen evolution. Then this process is a balance because we promoted the electrochemical oxidation the oxidation evolution reaction is promoted in minor uh, 
mean or gray. But if the oxygen of evolution reaction is promoted, uh, is mainly promoted, the electrochemical oxidation is poor. For this reason, we observe it, or we try to explain what is the direct or indirect mechanisms. In the case of the direct anodic oxidation, the organic pollutant has a specific interaction with the surface of the anodic material. And in this way, in this pathway, the organic pollutant uh, transfer electrons with the surface. In the case of the indirect electrochemical oxidation, a specific species, oxidizing species, are produced in the anodic surface because in the solution or in the effluent, we have mediators or a starting material that after uh, the oxidation process at the anodic surface, promoting the production or the electrosynthesis of the oxidants and the oxidants in reacts in the bulk, uh, favoring the elimination of the organics. In this case of the reactions, the electrochemical conversion is promoted or the electrochemical incineration combustion at the same time is possible because this kind of process depends on the efficiency of the production of the oxidants and at the same time the efficiency of the efficacy of the oxidants to oxidize or to remove the organic pollutants from the effluent. Then this is a process and we try to obtain the best conditions during the treatment of the effluent to promote the direct oxidation or indirect oxidation in order to avoid the oxygen evolution and increase or improve the efficiency of the process. Uh, like explained in the beginning, this is the, 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 the mechanisms proposed and uh, published by Cominelis where we find the electrochemical combustion and the electrochemical conversion. The hydroxyl radicals is possible by physical absorption because they remain free in the surface in the electrochemical combustion and is absorbed or chemically absorbed in the electrochemical conversion. And after that, uh, interact with the organic pollutant to produce byproducts. Then, we have different materials, and that materials uh, present different over potential to produce oxygen. In this kind of, e of example, uh, we observe the metal oxide material, platinum, lead oxide, and diamond electrode. Uh, in the extremes, we can observe the metal oxide material has or present lower potential to produce oxygen. And conversely, diamond electrode presents higher potential to produce or to promote the oxygen evolution reaction. When used this kind of materials in the uh, elimination of the organics, which we induce the behavior during the elimination. It's true, different materials has or have uh, a specific behavior during the secret voltammetry or electrochemical measurements. And this kind of studies um, allow to allow to understand very well what is the mechanisms expected for the elimination of the organics. But when you observe the comparison between uh, this kind of materials, we uh, induce that the best material is the diamond electrode because it has a higher potential to produce oxygen, then it's favorable the elimination of the organics. Conversely, to the uh, mixed oxide uh, material because it has lower potential to produce oxygen then promote the production of the oxygen avoiding the elimination of the organics. For this reason, the efficiency is very lower. And the other materials, platinum and lead oxide, uh, remain between them. This is a clear example uh, about the application of the concepts of the electrochemical oxidation during the elimination of the organics or during the uh, 
treatment of a specific ethnic. Um, actually, the platinum used is the platinum oxide because the platinum material during the treatment of the effluents um, is submitted to high potential. And for this reason, the surface observed or attained that the platinum is composed by the platinum oxide, not is the typical platinum or free, free compounds platinum surface, because this kind of surface is typical for the electrochemical measurements and not is used in the, during the treatment of the water. In the case of the uh, ruthenium and iridium oxides, it's important to, to indicate that uh, this kind of materials establish a specific interaction between the hydroxyl radicals and the oxide lattice. When the hydroxyl radicals are produced in the surface of the ruthenium oxide or the thin oxide, this kind of the oxygen species are introduced in the oxidant, ox, oxide lattice. And after that, this, the number of the oxidation of the ruthenium increase and the species in the surface increase, this, the oxygen species. For this reason, this kind of interaction is very strong and the hydroxyl radicals produced at that surface are not free to react with the organic pollen. For this reason, or therefore, uh, this kind of materials um, promote uh, the electrochemical conversion and the efficacy of the electrochemical treatment is lower. This is the same mechanism for the iridium, iridium oxide in this case. Then, the most important uh, oxidizing species in the electrochemical oxidation is the hydroxyl radical, and this can of the oxidant depends on the nature of the electrocatalytic material and the form that interact with the anodic surface, physically or chemically absorbed. Physically absorbed are more reactive and chemically absorbed less reactive or less uh, available to react with the, with the organic material. But it is not a general rule because at this time, many researchers continue to produce or to synthesize or prepare different electrocatalytic materials. And at that time, we have hybrid materials that depending on the conditions, the behavior is by active or by non-active material. Then the classification of the materials is possible depending on the uh, availability, availability of the hydroxyl radicals, uh, it's possible to classify the oxidation power of the anode. At this moment, the most important anode is the BDD, boron doped ion, but probably uh, other materials are prepared uh, uh, currently and uh, evidence similar efficiencies than BDD. During, during the 2000 or the, the last two decades, Cominellis contribute with different or specific results about the diamond electron. Uh, when this kind of material was introduced, it was important to prove the production of the hydroxyl radicals not only by the formation of the adduct, but the using other kind of the specific uh, analytical instruments or uh, instruments to prove the, the production of the hydroxyl radicals. In that case, the EPR was used, the electron spin resonance and the liquid chromatography measurements in order to prove the production of the hydroxyl radicals at the BTD uh, electron. After that, Cominellis uh, inclusive introduced the mechanisms about the participation of the molecular oxygen when, where, 
the oxygen, the molecular oxygen produced at the anodic surface is uh, introduced in the pathway of the oxidation, abstracting uh, hydrogen, and after that continues to the elimination of the organics. Probably this kind of the mechanism is not very well known or well studied, but exists this kind of the of the participation participation of the oxygen. In fact, when the experiments are performed in presence or in absence of the oxygen, different pathways are uh, participate during the elimination of the organics, producing polymeric or carboxylic acids like uh, byproducts at the end of the, of the process. At the same time, Cominelis uh, give uh, the contribution above the concentration profile of the drugs and radicals at the, at the borrowed open diamond in order to understand what is the amount produced of the droxyl radicals at the BDD surface. And uh, this kind of material produce efficiently uh, this kind of the oxidants. And at the same time, these oxidants are available to react with the organic pollutants. With this information, Cominelis introduced the model about the electrochemical oxidation where the treatment is controlled by a mass charge trans transport control or mass transport control. In the beginning, when the uh, when the treatment is uh, when the current or the potential is used 100% to eliminate the organic pollutants, the process is charge transport control. But after that, when the the concentration of the material of the organic pollutant decrease in the effluent, then the mass transfer control is uh, the main important behavior during the treatment. And it's possible with this kind of uh, method or a model to predict what is the result of the treatment of different organic pollutants. But the material not is the only specific operative parameter that influence the electrochemical oxidation or other electrochemical technologies. There are many, many important operating parameters like effect of genotic material, the fueling or the corrosion elements, the effect of the current density and the fluidic dynamic conditions, effect of the nature and concentration of the organic pollutant, the effect of the supporting electrolyte and the conductivity, the effect of the pH, the temperature, oxygen, and the oxidant species. And uh, we try to put together more electrochemical technologies or copy more electrochemical technologies, more operating parameters influencing the in the efficiency of this kind or that kind of the approaches. At this moment, the electrochemical technologies are very different, but, but uh, the most important uh, publications or contributions continues to be about the electrochemical oxidation. In that graphic, we observed different uh, electrochemical technologies over the publications, the number of publications in the last years. And we observed the electrochemical oxidation is in the first place. After that, the combined methods, more people introduced the combination of coupling technologies. The electrooxidation with active fluorine or mediated electrochemical oxidation is the third place because we, we introduce a specific mediator to produce oxidants in the effluent and to promote the organic or the organic oxidation. At, or at the same time, we found in the effluents the starting material to produce the oxidants and not is necessary to introduce in the effluent. And we observed or we obtained 
the indirect electrochemical oxidation when we use a real effluent. After that, we observed the production of the uh, electrophenton. Electrophenton is a good electrochemical technology, a magnificent or a fantastic electrochemical technology, and continues to produce more and more reports, more and more publications, and insights about this kind of, of a technology. And we observed other technologies. It's important to indicate that this kind of technologies have specific abilities, an advantage and disadvantage. In the case of the abilities, we can treat different kind of the efferents. At that moment, different researchers in the world, in different parts of, of the world, introduce or try to treat different real waste waters. Uh, probably for many years, many people try to oxidize organic model compounds. But at that time, many and many people try to prove that the electrochemical technology indefinitely, what is the technology, it's usable or is possible to apply to eliminate the organic pollutants with different or real efforts. Um, it's possible to produce reactive oxygen species with different technologies. Other ability is the production of the strong oxidants, the inactivation at the same time of microorganisms and no pH restrictions. Inclusive for the technologies combining phantom reaction, now it's possible to work at pH or neutral pH and it's very usable, very effective with this kind of product. In the case of the advantage, we have many advantages. The versatility, automation, no toxic reagents production, no toxic reagents in introduction in the, in the effluent, attractive to compact technology in some cases, and uh, to combine with different other advanced oxidation process like pre-treatment technology or post-treatment technology. And the disadvantage, uh, there are many disadvantages and probably we, we can introduce more and more disadvantages, but this is, is uh, at that moment, the different contributions with different people, uh, many, by many years, try to eliminate this kind of disadvantage. Of course, producing new electrocatalytic materials, decreasing the operating cost by introducing renewable energies, uh, eliminate the byproducts uh, are more toxic or toxic byproducts, uh, try to produce or to, to, to construct, to design more effective uh, uh, reactors and to decrease the oxygen evolution reaction or other parallel reactions to increase the efficiency of the process. The electrochemical oxidation, in fact, is used for three to different uh, real effluents, for example, petroleum, hydrocarbon effluents, the car wash uh, effluents, the uh, real industrial applications for the electrocoagulation, let chat or landing field let chat uh, treatment by using laboratory or pilot scale treatments. Uh, for the pro to elimination of the oil produced for a specific industries, for the treatment of the real textile effluents, and many, many contributions, including more and more real world, real effluents during the treatment of the uh, organic pollutants. And uh, this kind of the contributions continues to obtain more information about the viability to use this kind of technologies to remove the organics and to improve the efficiency and probably to produce devices for the specific cases in specific countries or specific um, industries or domestic applications. Then, we observed, for example, this kind of the example about that review of, of the textile uh, dyes. 
There are many materials used for the elimination of the organics, or in this case for the dyes, and we observe the, that the removal of the color is in many cases 100%, and the elimination of the organic matter in the effluent depends on the electrocatalytic anodic material used. But we use it, the BDD, the elimination of the organic matter, it's more efficient. Probably the most important now is the current applications about the electrochemical oxidation. We have different electro electrochemical technologies that can uh, be used for the elimination or for the, the pollution of the effluents. In the case of the, electro the electrooxidation by producing hydroxyl radicals of active chlorine is very typical the electrophantom is more and more people working with the electrophantom uh, technologies when we can produce hydroxyl radicals at the anodic surface. If the oxygen is injected in the effluent, a, a high hydrogen peroxide is produced at the cathodic surface and by introducing iron in the effluent or in the solution is possible to produce hydroxyl radicals. After that, we observe the use of the electrocoagulation, probably in the industry. The photoelectrocatalysis, when we use a specific anodic material that is uh, possible to produce hydroxyl radicals when uh, apply a current density or potential. But at the same time, when you incidize or radiate the UV light or light, solar light, it's possible to increase that production of the hydroxyl radicals. For the reason, the solar photoelectrocatalysis emerged like a new process, but uh, that can be used for the elimination of the organics. But the electrophantom, once again, is possible to combine it with the photoelectrocatalysis and uh, obtaining electrophantom reaction, producing homogeneous uh, hydroxyl radicals and using an anodic material to produce hydroxyl radicals at the heterogeneous pathway. But at the same time, if we introduce the radiation, this kind of the anodic material can uh, produce uh, the hydroxyl radicals or increase the production of the hydroxyl radicals. And now, currently, it's usable to, to find in the, in the literature the complex and hybrid treatments, where we introduce the combined electrocoagulation technologies, the copel and hybrid electrooxidation methods, peroxycoagulation hybrid electrophantom treatments, copel and hybrid photoassisted electrochemical treatments, or micro microbio microbiological biological fuel cells that is possible to use in the treatment of the organic pollutants. At this, in this frame, the, the combine, combining technologies is the most important uh, insight at this time. For, in this case, for example, the electrodialysis and the electro electrochlorination or bioremediation with the electrokinetics for the elimination of the pollutants from soil, the electrooxidation with the absorption or the electrooxidation by using a polymeric electrochemical cell, the electrochemical phantom by using a heterogeneous catalyst, uh, avoiding the introducing uh, iron solution, but using a specific solid material that after the treatment is possible to the mechanical elimination from the effluent and contributing with the environment uh, decreasing the, 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 the solids in the, the sol, sol, solids in the, in the effluent. Some examples, for example, is the conductive diamond by using sono electrochemistry for the disinfection. We observe it here, uh, the, 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 the electrochemical reactor. We uh, observe it here, the sono, uh, the ultrasound production and the, the hydroxyl radicals and 
the electrochemical production of the drug cell radicals. When we use the sono, uh, the ultrason, we observe the desactivation of the microorganisms. When we introduce the electro disinfection, the, we improve or the elimination is improved. And combining both uh, technologies, the electro disinfection is achieved completely. In the case of the soil, sometimes we treat the soil by using different uh, supporting electrolytes because the uh, uh, electrodes are introduced in the, in, the electro, in the supporting electrolytes to remove the organics, in this case, the this, this cell from the soil, and the organic pollutants are transported to the reservoirs in the cathodic and the anodic compartments. We observe it in these photos after the treatment. The pollutants are introduced in the cathode or removed to the solution in the cathode and the anode. But after that, the, we have a specific effluent contaminated and is necessary to eliminate or to, to treat. And for the reason combining, combining the electrochemical uh, remediation of the soil and after that, the treatment of the effluent is possible to eliminate or to contribute once again with the environment, environment in order to reduce the organic pollutants in the effluents. The per perspectives about the different electrochemical technologies or different applications of the electrochemical oxidation. In the case of the combining uh, process, it's possible to combine this kind of the electrochemical technologies like pre-treatments or post-treatments. Uh, more and more studies combine electrochemical technologies, putting them before the biological uh, oxidation or after the biological oxidation. Uh, it's possible to introduce the combination of the micro microbiological fuel cells for the wastewater treatment because the uh, microorganisms obtain the feed stock from the effluents and or from the soil to produce electricity and sometimes it's possible to uh, supply the electricity for the electrochemical treatment from the micro fuel cells other kind of technologies is mixing the, the electrocoagulation with indirect electrochemical oxidation or oxidation, uh, direct oxidation by using a specific electrocatalytic materials. In this case, at the same time, it's possible to introduce electrocoagulation because we use iron or aluminum, the more typical materials with all their advanced oxidation a process like phytoremediation, and it's important. The use of the nanotechnology for the producing or for producing uh, anodic materials in order to produce large disk electrodes or to produce more and more uh, significant areas of the electrodes that uh, have the capacity, the, 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 the um, efficacy to produce oxidants to remove the organics from the effluent. In fact, we know at that time different materials like the oxide materials, platinum, lead oxide, tin oxide, a boron dopate diamond, or a stoichiometric thin um, uh, titanium oxide. And these kind of materials are the most typical used in the treatment of the effluents but more and more researchers continue to produce and to prepare uh, more uh, electrocatalytic materials with, with great efficiency to produce oxidants or to remove organics from the effluent. What is the target or the challenge for the different groups to use or to pass from the laboratory uh, experiments to the pilot experiments. In that case, uh, probably thinking about the large, large, large electrodes is more difficult, but it's possible to uh, put together different stacks with different electrodes. And with this kind of the treatment, it's possible to eliminate 
more efficiently the organic pollutants from the effluents or from specific cases, industrial or domestic effluents. Uh, we put an example here when introduced in, in the laboratory, the, the, the concept of these stacks. We use it, uh, we compare the use, the uh, specific materials in one electrochemical cell and in the second electrochemical cell, other material. In that case, uh, active materials, platinum in the first one and in the second, thin platinum oxide uh, was introduced in the cell in order to improve the removal of the organic materials. Other purpose perspective is com the combination of the electrochemical technologies for the elimination of the organics from the soil or from the air. It's very important and very nice application because now currently more our researchers introduce the elimination of the organics from the soil in, the, in the, their laboratories, and at the same time to remove the organic pollutants from the gases. Gases dissolved in the, in the specific solutions in order to remove the organic pollutants after dissolving this kind of organics in the solution and continuous elimination with direct or direct oxidation by using BDD or other electrocatalytic materials. This, the other target is to produce uh, autonomous um, uh, pilot plants by using solar photoreactors uh, or solar panels to supply the energy for the electrochemical technology and to produce or specific uh, pilot plants for the industrial or disinfection water. In fact, the use of the photovoltaic energy or renewables energy, it's, it's more and more interesting for the different electrochemical groups because it's possible to combine this kind of the energies, the renewable energies to drive in electrochemical technologies for wet water and soil treatment. And we can to decrease the, uh, the cost and the energy consumption of this kind of process. And at the same time, like uh, main, uh, introduced by Professor Nadish, the use of the electrophenton. Electrophenton is a very fantastic uh, electrochemical technology. And more and more people use this kind of technology to produce the uh, oxidant spaces, but introducing uh, solid uh, electro uh, solid catalyst in order to release the iron or the uh, the species that promote the production of the hydroxyl radicals or the other oxidizing species in the effluent. Other per perspective is the use of the uh, theoretical studies in order to understand very well the mechanisms about the use of the different electrochemical technology and to understand better the operating conditions in order to, to, to design and construct specific electrochemical reactors and electrocatalytic materials for the elimination of the organics. Probably a specific challenge is to combine different electrochemical techniques. For example, here, is to produce, to, to construct, to design a specific uh, electrochemical reactors that use it, are used for the treatment of the wet water. After that, cleaning the water. And we use sensors by using electrochemistry to detect the organic pollutants or inorganic pollutants in the depolluted water. But we use it here the supply power or the power supply connected directly to the electrical power. For the reason it's possible to use other kind of technologies to produce this kind of the energy, electrical energy, in this case, the uh, micro fuel cells here to, by using the, the, the reactions in the soil to produce the electrical energy to supply 
the electrochemical cell and to produce specific devices for the disinfection of the water. This kind of the challenge is very interesting, very nice, and many groups in the world are used now. Then, um, some results in, in the laboratory, more specific, are the use specific, the R, the use of the surfactants. The surfactants, in this case, the sodium dodecyl sulfate, in order to release, to obtain, to the breaking this kind of molecule during the electrochemical oxidation. And with this kind of the inorganic part of the surfactant to produce or to increase the production of the persulfate. In fact, when we use only the electrochemical oxidation by BDD using sulfate in the solution, we produce a specific amount of the persulfate. By introducing the surfactant in the, in the effluent, the release of this kind of this part of the organic molecule uh, promote the, the production of this the per sulfate. We observe the mechanisms. The sulfate in, so, in the solution, together with the hydroxyl radical produced in the BDD, promote the, the production of the per sulfate of the radical uh, ion radical sulfate. That uh, oxidant spaces promote the elimination of the organics. But at the same time, if we can introduce the surfactant, uh, the release of the sulfate promote the, 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 the production of the persulfate, and the persulfate continues the elimination of the organics. In fact, the elimination of the, pers the, the surfactant is attained at the same time to the production of the, the persulfate in the solution because the micelles are broken during the elimination the, during the electrochemical oxidation and the sulfate released in solution promotes the production of the per sulfate. That kind of the application is possible to use during the treatment of the soil, during the treatment of the petroleum uh, hydrocarbon pollutants, because for example, uh, we can introduce in the effluent surfactant in order to um, uh, concentrate the the, the pollutants by the formation of the micelles, and after that, this concentrate uh, effluent is treated by the electrochemical oxidation, producing the per sulfate and promoting uh, or improve, enhancing the, 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 the efficiency of the, of the treatment. This kind of the approach is usable in this kind and other kind of the organic compounds but it's necessary to mention that is more feasible in BDD electrocatalytic material because in other materials, the production of the per sulfate is more, more, more difficult. And uh, to, to, to maybe to finish, is the, the use of specific devices to treat a specific effluents. In this case, we use this kind of the electrochemical BDD uh, reactor to treat the effluent of the um, uh, obtained from the washing laundry. We use it at the same time, the platinum to compare and the diamond film to observe that uh, diamond is a good material for the treatment of this kind of the effluents and probably the platinum is not the best uh, material to treat this kind of the effluent. But what is the 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 the, the, the opposite the opposite of or the uh, the objective of this kind of the research that we can design specific devices in small dimensions in order to introduce the BDD because BDD is very cost the cost is is higher. And introducing small devices is possible to introduce in different sectors of the industry in order to treat the effluents and avoiding the, the, the large dimensions of the electrodes or large preparations of this kind of materials because it's uh, not available to, to think about the use of the diamond electrodes in bigger, bigger pilot plants or plants for the treatment of the effluents. At the same time, the combination of the electrocoagulation and the electrooxidation, very similar to the 
to the other researches performed by Professor Nadic, and by using the electrochemical oxidation, the electrochemical coagulation to remove the solids, soils from the from the effluent to remove the organic pollutants, and after that, treat by electrochemical oxidation, producing uh, oxidizing spaces to complete the disinfection of the or the pollution of the effluent. In fact, when the this kind of the method or the approach, combined approach, is used, it's possible to reuse the effluent. Uh, we try to 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 uh, test the to by toxicological test the, the 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 reuse of this kind of the effluent, obtaining good results about the germination of the specific plants of a specific um, uh, yes a specific plants. Probably the question is, but it's possible to reuse this kind of effluent for the lettuce for the tomatoes for the probably not but it's possible to use another kind of the elements of the plants that uh, after that to to the ground is possible to obtain biodiesel or biocombust biofuels in order to uh, improve this kind uh, of the, the use of this kind this uh, effluence after the electrochemical treatment and the introduce of the photovoltaic uh, solar energy together with the batteries in order to treat a specific effluents or the treatment of the soil. For the reason we believe this kind of the research is important because we decrease the, the energy consumption of the electrochemical treatment and obtain this kind of the energy from the renewable uh, application, for example, wind or solar solar energy. Then, in order to finish this presentation, thank you so much. Uh, this is my part of my group in the in Brazil, and thank you so much for my colleagues that gave me the opportunity to collaborate with them, and at the same time, uh, like mentioned by Professor Nadic. Thank you once again, Professor Cominelis and Professor Achille de Battisti for the introduction in this kind of the application of the electrochemistry and continues now, uh, continues to, to uh, employ in different electrochemical technologies for specific cases for elimination of the organic pollutants. Then, thank you so much. Thank you so much once again for the invitation and uh, I hope to contribute with this small and very, very heavy presentation about the electrochemical oxidation and all the electrochemical technologies emerging from electrochemical oxidation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Carlos. Carlos, can you please uh, stop sharing your slide? Yeah. So that we can go for uh, next session. It is uh the panel discussions uh dr iron gumar pella if you have any questions please raise your questions i think he is having some problem with internet dwipa please uh <clears throat> thank you professor carlos for the very informative lecture and it was a complete package of so much information put together in a single uh, talk. Um, so I'd like to ask, discuss with you a few generic questions. And so when, when it comes to electrochemical advanced oxidation process, it always, uh, the first question will be always the real world applications. And you have uh, given some of the examples like washing machine, wastewater treatment and other industrial treatment. Uh, however, I would like to know about um, any commercialized electrochemical treatment units that has been there in the market, is there under electrode configuration or reactor configuration, how it is. And also about, second question is, so what is the largest scale of 
electrochemical treatment that has been implemented in the real field and the number I would like to know. Yeah, thank you so much for the for the comments and thank you so much for the for the questions. Then the electrochemical technologies is very, very curious, peculiar, and at the same time is not easy. Yeah. The most important concern is the cost and the energy application or the energy supply to 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 to, to put in, in, in really application the the, the, the the electrochemical technology but in the case of the real cases in that moment is for example the disinfection disinfection in the case of the hospital uses in the, in different hospitals it's necessary to use the um, uh, brine solutions. Brine solutions are a specific solutions with the oxidizing species, like uh, chlorine water used in, at home. Yeah, it's very similar. And for this kind of cases, it's usable the, 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 the electrochemical oxidation or mediated electrochemical oxidation because we can produce the brine solution. And after that, we use this kind of brine solution. What is the most feasible brine solution? Active chlorine mm -hmm. yeah, and percarbonate mm -hmm. solution. Yeah? This kind of solution are used sometimes for the uh, disinfection of the instruments. Yeah? The same application is used in, uh, I don't know what is the, exactly the name, but with the, where is produced meal, chicken meal, yeah, mm -hmm. or, or um, chicken meal or other kind of application. What is the form? I know because my colleague, uh, during my PhD, I worked together with a um, specific colleague, Sergio Ferro. And Sergio Ferro moved to Australia, uh, I think so since 2014, uh, and applied this kind of uh, electrochemical technology. Produce brine solution yeah, mm -hmm. to put in the chicken, in the little chicken, yeah. And this kind of brain solution, I don't know what is exactly because, of course, it's top secret for the company, but it's used the brain solution to put in the chicken. And this kind of the brain solution avoid a specific disease of this mm -hmm. kind of the animals and promote the growth of this kind of the animals and uh, avoid the, the disease and increase the production of the milk. Yeah. This is a real application, but this kind of the real application use small devices. Mm -hmm. Probably it's impossible to think about the uh, uh, plant treatment of the water in the industry because it's mm -hmm. necessarily a big, big electrodes. And mm -hmm. when you think with the big electrodes, it's not more possible, for example, to connect directly to the energy, you know, you need more power. You need the the, the the wires, yeah, more specific wires for the, for the connections. Electrical connection is more specific because the power is bigger, and at the same time, the electrode produced at a higher dimension is not the same in all area. For this reason, is more usable different stacks with small areas putting together different electrodes or the same electrode material to increase the efficiency of the of the of the of the, of the treatment. Yeah. 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 Exist other you. applications, for example, uh, production of the ozone in the vegetables, but there are many. Probably industrially speaking, is more difficult to see. I have uh, some more question. Uh, so you have talked about combining biological and electrochemical oxidation process to improve the efficiency, uh, treatment, removal efficiency. So in the case of using electrochemical treatment as a, a pre-treatment to biological 
treatment to improve the bio biodegradability of face water yeah. so uh, will there be any left out reactive oxygen species if we are using it as a pre treatment that will affect the biodegradation process like will it be again killing killing the bacteria or can we use a sustainable radical scavenging process rather than adding uh, some more chemicals to it so will you uh, comment on it yeah this is a good question yeah it's great it's fantastic question because it's possible to use first biological treatment and after that electrochemical is the most usable because you yeah. will decrease the organic uh, loading of the pollutant and after that to remove you remove the, the microorganisms that participate in biological processes after that you obtain the effluent and apply the electrochemical yeah. processes yes any concerns about that yes. but when you use the the other treatment mm -hmm. or combine it together is probably more difficult combining but when you put electrochemical oxidation before the bio biological but biochemical biological treatment yeah is uh, is necessary yeah to maintain ph conditions yes. and probably to use a specific oxidizing oxidizing species not hydroxyl radicals not active chlorine because after okay. that when you use this kind or you produce when it's introduced in the biology bio treatment mm -hmm. that species eliminate the microorganisms that mm -hmm. perform that process yeah it's more usable for example persulfate it uh, peroxy hydrogen peroxide probably yeah but at the same time it's difficult because it's necessary to maintain the ph conditions in order in order to avoid influence or to avoid the elimination of the microorganisms in the second treatment and combining is more difficult more more difficult but it's possible yeah mm -hmm. sometimes is uh, is possible put together by using not a specific electrocatalytic material that mm -hmm. produces higher concentrations of the oxidizing species like diamond electro is more is more usable by using dimensionally stable anodes for example iridium oxide mm -hmm. because you produce a specific oxidizing species yeah. in the surface to yes. promote in the degradation of the organics and at the same time the biological treatment occurs but mm -hmm. in sometimes that microorganisms um, interact with the surface yes. transferring electrons yes. and maintaining the life of this kind of the microorganisms that is more and more complex mm -hmm. yeah. thank you like i have also have some more questions um so like what is the scope of using uh, electrochemical oxi uh, oxidation process for treating a water like uh, you have talked so much about the wastewater treatment but i would like to know about is there any scope of using uh, electrochemical in water treatment other than treating uh, ro reject mm, other other like uh, for example the soil mm. yeah uh, in the case of the soil for example well, okay other other waste other not other reject is possible classificate depending on the nature for example gas or soil because water is more easy to understand what is the the mechanism uh, occurs in the solution but in the case of the soil what is the method uh, when we introduce the electrodes between the soil we promote four electrochemical behaviors electrophoresis electrosmotic electrolysis and um, electrodialysis electrophoretic electrosmosis electrolysis and i don't remember well <laughs> And then 
uh, in the case of the electrolysis, is promoted in the anodic surface. Then if you introduce a specific mediator mm -hmm. in the I and mean, this way to produce the oxidizing species, yeah, at the anodic compartment, this kind of the oxidizing species are moved through the soil. Mm -hmm. And in the soil, yeah, in the in the fluidic yeah. movement, yeah, increase the re oxidation reactions mm -hmm. for the elimination of the organic pollutants in the soil at the same time. This is one form to working yeah. together with, yeah. the, with the electrolysis mm -hmm. and or electrochemical oxidation together with the electrokinetic reactions. This is one form. Other is by using the permeable reactive barriers. You yeah. introduce yeah. a specific barrier in the soil, you yeah. produce a specific spaces here in the, in the solution. When mm -hmm. I shift the surface of the active barrier, you promote once again mm -hmm. other re oxidation reactions and contribute to, the, to remove the organic pollutants. Yeah. This is one form yeah. in the case mm -hmm. of the other reject. Thank you. Uh, and, and one last question. Uh, so where does the electrochemical oxidation uh, lies in between the ad, uh, other advanced oxidation process in terms of cost and if we, uh, cost and energy consumption? So when we compa compare to ozone and other treatments? Uh, res regarding the, the, the renewable uh, renewable energies, mm -hmm. I don't understand. Could you repeat, please? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Professor, she is asking the comparison of cost and energy with respect to other uh, advanced oxidation process. That means comparison of cost of uh, electrochemical technologies with respect to other advanced oxidation processes. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the cost is, is possible to decrease. Okay, mm -hmm. exist for that question, there are many, many answers, but in the most important cases, uh, we can explain, um, we combine electrochemical technology with the advanced oxidation process. I don't know, other kind of process. Yeah, it's possible to decrease the cost because mm -hmm. we can use first in the first place, one of them, mm -hmm. and after that, to stop the treatment. In the case of the electrochemical treatment, is better when you use the uh, energy of the electrochemical the current to remove efficiently the organic pollutant. When we observe that our process is depending on the mass transfer control, at that moment, we can stop the process and introduce other oxid advanced oxidation process like mm -hmm. absorption, heterogeneous catalysis yeah. and something like that. Because at that moment in the electrochemical technology, you have lower concentration of the organics. You promote more the evolution, oxy uh, uh, oxygen evolution reaction, then mm -hmm. you lost the energy in that reaction, not in the elimination of the organics. For the reason is more convenient, for convenience is more feasible to stop that process at that time, and after that introduce the advanced oxidation process. Mm -hmm. If you observe in the literature during the treatment of relief with the electrochemical technology, you spend four hours, six hours, eight hours only with the electrochemical technology. It's better to stop the technology before, I don't know, mm -hmm. four, three, and after mm -hmm. that to introduce the advanced oxidation, the advanced oxidation process, and you reduce completely the energy consumption, and mm -hmm. consequently, you decrease the cost. All their treatments like uh, biological or uh, phytoremediation, or I don't know, phantom, um, all the kind of the treatments are can be introduced, yeah? And with this kind of introduction be to, together with electrochemical technology, it's possible to reduce the cost. It's usable. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking with you.
and thank you nivi sir for arranging this informative series thank you thank you so much for the questions you thank you so much for the opportunity dr dr seema singh please proceed your mic is off seema singh please yeah it's fine it's not audible dr seema singh is not audible yeah some problem with uh, mic i think with seema singh uh, tohin please proceed sir uh, very nice talk very nice talk sir uh, it was you have covered all the points um, for electrochemical oxidation in a very very nice manner uh, in this one hour talk you could cover all the basics and also gave a very good insight to all the future applications also uh, i have a few small queries uh, regarding this sir uh, when we do this kind of uh, uh, reaction what you showed like in uh, your uh, washing uh, machine effluent treatment uh, when we do that kind of similar experiments in our uh, lab also with with different uh, effluents uh, when we see the charge density versus uh, removal it is not always proportional meaning uh if we increase the charge density the same by the same amount the removal is not increasing that is uh, visible in your graph also so you have any comment on that sir okay. this is this is very very interesting uh, question because um washing laundry machine is very um, different with respect to effluent we put in that in that place a specific clothes and when you wash in you obtain different effluent but at the same time depends we observe it specific things this kind of the treatment depends on the hardness of the water depends on the surface that we use it in the in the detergent or in the in this uh, surface and use it to remove the 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 from the clothes and depends on the uh, amount of the chlorine in the water because sometimes depending some the regions the um, the concentration of the chlorine in the water is different and affect probably i i report my treatment in the publication i report but it is necessary to consider this kind of the phenomena because when we increase the concentration of the chlorine we introduce other oxidant in the removal at the same time if the surfactant forms the micelles during the washing uh, process it's important to know if the, if that micelles are broken during the electrochemical oxidation or not because sometimes this kind of the material organics uh, compounds block it the anodic surface and when the surface is blocked then it's impossible to produce hydroxyl radicals and the performance decrease the treatment stop it and we try to to observe observe what things in this kind and in the last condition is the uh, is important to know the hardness of the water we observe it that sometimes the calcium magnesium and iron form a specific complex with the organic matter and this kind of complex difficulties increase the the, the 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 difficulty to remove the organic matter from the water is more is more intense with the calcium with the presence of the calcium if the water contains higher concentrations of the calcium calcium form a specific complex and after that 
that kind of the context, it's more difficult to get directly um, uh, electron transfer or at the same time, the attack from the hydroxyl radicals and com complicated the elimination of the organics. For this reason, probably we obtained different results. At that time, yeah, uh, in our case, the results were uh, favorable, of, were excellent, fantastic for, for, for us. But in other, in other regions, we observed this kind of the phenomenon. The, the, the same electrochemical reactor, the same electro electrocatalytic material, the same conditions promote different efficiency removals. And the most important parameters that that free hardness of the water, the surface that's used in the detergent, and the um, uh, active uh, chlorine in the in the water. For the reason is is possible affecting the, the process. Uh, so do you think what we were sort of postulating is um, maybe there is a wasteful use of uh, these hydroxyl radicals which are being generated because of uh, at higher uh, charge density, there's a lot of hydroxyl radicals which are generated and they tend to react amongst each other and produce water. So there's a wasteful use of hydroxyl radicals. So to counter that, we were also thinking of putting up some kind of a adsorbent in the system, which will absorb the hydroxyl radicals. Like, as you said, physical adsorption of the hydroxyl radicals will give a higher efficiency. Physical adsorption is giving higher efficiency as compared to chemical adsorption. So we were also looking at that uh, aspect. Um, but as of now, we have not been able to prove anything conclusively if it is actually what we are thinking. Any comments? Uh, could you repeat the question, please? So hydroxyl radicals are generated when uh, this uh, electrochemical oxidation is happening. If my charge density is very high, there's a lot of hydroxyl radicals being generated. These hydroxyl radicals, if there's a large concentration of hydroxyl radicals, they tend to react amongst each other and form water. HO, HO will form H2O. That is what we were thinking. So there's a wasteful use of these hydroxyl radicals. So if I dissolve it slowly, if my charge density is very low, I'm getting better uh, removal of the effluent, uh, of the pollutant. So, then, yeah, I, I think I understand. Probably, probably not this, probably, but um, depending on the nature of the electron material, yeah, we like to observe it in the, in the presentation, the, ox, the electrochemical treatment depends on the oxygen evolution reaction and the direct and indirect electrochemical oxidation. If the oxygen, oxygen evolution reaction is favorable, then this kind of process, my target is decrease. But if we increase the electrochemical oxidation, I decrease the oxygen evolution reaction. But why oxygen evolution reaction? Before to produce, before to produce oxygen evolution, oxygen in, in, in gas form is produced hydroxyl radicals. When that hydroxyl radicals are is enough stable, it's possible to combine them to obtain uh, hydrogen peroxide or ozone. It's possible. Then uh, if the hydroxyl radicals uh, concentration is low or decrease because I uh, or we are producing hydrogen peroxide and ozone. But at the same time, not always, um, not this are our general rule. When we increase the current or the potential, this kind of the condition implies in the higher concentrations of the hydroxyl radicals. Not always is the same, it depends on the material. And sometimes when the limit current is ultra paced, 
that kind of current or this current is used to produce oxygen because I ultra uh, I shift the potential and pass to produce directly oxygen at the anodic surface. And the, the production of the hydroxyl radicals, hydrogen peroxide, and ozone decrease. And consequently, the elimination of the organics decrease. This kind of effect is observed always in all electrocatalytic materials, inclusive, including diamond electrode. Diamond electrode is a specific material that supports higher currents in order to avoid or to favor the production of hydroxyl radicals. But more higher currents, more promoting oxygen evolution and less the concentration um, the hydroxyl radicals. In the case of the metal oxides, platinum, thin oxide, lead oxide, this limit of the current is more lower. Immediately, we produce oxygen, oxygen in, the, in the solution and lose the production of the hydroxyl radicals or the production of the other, other um, uh, oxidizing species. Yeah. Sometimes we, we have chlorine in the solution. The chlorine between oxygen and chlorine, chlorine is the first reaction promoted and you can produce active chlorine, but if the current is enough to produce chlorine gas, you lose the chlorine in the solution and you continue to produce gas and avoid the production of the hydroxyl radicals, oxidizing spaces and other things. And the process decreases in the efficiency. This is a typical behavior for all electrocatalytic materials, but, but, Notice a general rule because it depends on the operating conditions, hydrodynamic of the reactor, pH conditions, uh, organic pollutant, concentration of the organic pollutant, <clears throat> and many others. Thank you, sir. That was great. Uh, I have one small another uh, point. Uh, when we try to take this idea to various uh, people that we want to install a larger uh, effluent treatment system using this kind of uh, electrochemical uh, treatment. One of the things, uh, all the critics of this technology keep pointing out is that it is not a very environment friendly green technology uh, because it produces sludge, it, is, uh, it consumes a lot of electricity and those uh, deficiencies, they keep pointing it out to us. Um, you have any comments on that? How do we defend uh, this uh, system? Then, in the beginning, in the beginning when, I don't know exactly, but during the last 40, 50 years, all people defend the electrochemical technologies because only use the electron, the electricity, and don't, uh, no production of the more toxic pollutants is, is, is a tiny. But uh, during the years, these both topics are a problem because you use the electrical power, you can, the consumption increase, the cost increase, and you produce toxic, or, uh, toxic pollutants. Even you use electrochemical oxidation, electrophenton, and other things. Now, in my case, I defend oxidation or other electrochemical technology with different values but the most important for me are the combination or coupling the electrochemical technology with other advanced oxidation process okay in order to stop the electrochemical technology reducing the cost reducing the energy consumption and improving with the advanced oxidation process the elimination of the organics. And the other aspect I like or I consider important is all people, all people, the target of the people is to put, to, to introduce, 
to use the electrochemical technology for the complete elimination of the organic pollutants or inorganic because the target, the challenge is eliminate completely or arrive to the limit of the governmental laws, governmental restrictions or something like that, yeah? But in my case, I consider that this kind of objective is not more necessary. Why? When all pollutants are produced, when all pollutants are uh, degraded, eliminated from the water by using electrochemical technology, you produce at the end, you produce carboxylic acids. Some of them are considered high, uh, high additive volume products. Then if you stop the electrochemical technology at a specific time, you produce higher concentration of the specific compounds. And after that, you can isolate and sale this kind of materials. Yeah. This kind of process, not is new, is known by, no, by us like electrosynthetic way. We can produce different organic matter from a starting material. But in our case, we use it waste, solid or liquid waste. And after that, if, 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 uh, if it's possible to impose or to induce a specific conditions in order to uh, stop the electrochemical treatment and obtain one, two or more high additive value products is possible to work in other sense, environmental electrosynthetic way. Because for example, if you check the existing literature, the production of the acetic acid now is working by using carbon dioxide and it's feasible, works this kind of process. But us produce acetic acid during the elimination of the organics. And sometimes it's in the same concentration that obtained from the carbon dioxide. Then it's a good way to produce that. Yeah. And then, and then, then this is other form to other, other point of view to uh, defend yes. this kind of the process. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Thank you. Thank you. It is quite uh, quite insightful. It was very very nice talking to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the questions and thank you so much for the opportunity. Seema Singh, Doctor Seema Singh. Doctor Seema Singh, yeah, your voice is not coming. Okay, no problem. You can uh, write the questions to me and I will share with uh, Professor Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. Even uh, the viewers, they may raise some of the questions in our Facebook account that I will collect it and I will send you by today evening or tomorrow morning. So you can share that, you can replay that question. So uh, that questions and your replay, your replay will be posted in our Facebook account. So thank you, Professor Carlos, for this wonderful talk. Uh, you covered all the uh, aspects, mechanisms of electrochemical treatments for water and wastewater. It is an excellent talk. Even you accepted my invitation with a single email. And I, I, I invited you at the last moment. At that moment itself, you accepted. Thank you for, very much for that accepting my invitations. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Carlos, for uh, giving this wonderful talk. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about the process. Thank you so much for the, the, the uh, gift and this opportunity to speak with the other people, the young people, I think, at the same time, because it's important to remember the contributions for, from the pioneers. And at the same time, it's necessary to know the electrochemical technologies are not the completely 
complete solution for the world. It's necessary to combine, to study, to investigate. More investigation is necessary. And I think so, we continuous, we are right to the, to, to, to the industrial and the domestic application, real applications. Uh, thank you okay. so much for this great opportunity. Thank you, thank you. I would like to my, express my gratitude to our expert panel members, Dr. Arun Kumar Tala from NIT Swarthkal, but he couldn't join after some time. Dr. Seema Singh from Haridwar, Dr. Divya Priya from uh, Virginia Tech USA, and Dr. Tuhin Banerjee for joining with us and make the uh, panel discussion more vibrant. I think this is the first time we are coursing around two hours. It is almost yeah, two yeah. hours <laughs> for the discussion. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse thank you very me much. for this pain many times. Thank you so okay. much. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the viewers. So our next talk is on, uh, it was proposed on 13th, but unfortunately, uh, Professor Helena Nadez cannot join on 13th because of the university exam. So it will be postponed on 14th, on same time, 5 p.m. So Helena Nadez will discuss about application of UASB reactors for water, wastewater treatment. Till then, bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you. See you.